Hi guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Cool Kids Are Vegan podcast. This time I've got a guest. Um, his Instagram username is animal activist Ishan, and he's very much active in the vegan uh, movement in India. Um, so I'm very happy to have him this time on the podcast, kind of share more about him, what it is that he does, and um, some like questions about veganism, about the dairy industry in India. We're just going to be tackling different topics on veganism, particularly in India, because he's quite the expert actually on it. Uh, so very excited to introduce him. Uh, Ishan, thank you so much for being here on today's podcast. And um, Thank you yeah, so much for you, having me over. You're welcome. Could we get a short introduction about you, who you are, where you stay? Because I know you're not actually living in India right now. Um, just yeah, a short introduction about you. Awesome. So thank you so much for having me over, Farah. So just to get started with my introduction, I was born and raised in Delhi, originally from India, completed my education, undergrad, everything from India, uh, worked in two companies, actually ran a startup just after my undergrad, which was into sports management, and then uh, got into my family business for two years. And along the phase of when I was like, when I started the, when I basically got into the family business, was the transition period of time when I actually got into veganism collectively as an individual so my vegan journey would go back to the beginning of 2020 when i actually had come across uh basically witnessed suffering in terms of i basically came across a calf who didn't have a leg and post that uh, my journey centered around veganism actually started more on that later uh aside from that like just after having like being into like the vegan space along with the family business that i was running it it had it was like really good time that I was having back in India. But then I thought like, you know, why not like just do something different, you know, like just explore new territories. And that's when I thought of doing my MBA and I moved to Boston like a month and a half ago. And I've been in Boston for the last month and a half. And I'll be here at least for the next three, four years is at least what I think. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Wow, amazing. So you actually, yeah, 2020, which is the same time actually I turned vegan. So we actually have the same amount of years that we're vegan. That's really cool. Could you tell me more about the calf that you saw? Because um, was it, where was it? Like, was it just on the street? Was it like, how did you know that the dairy industry kind of, or that dairy in general was responsible for that calf having one leg? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so this one incident is like something that's really close to my heart because after this incident, I would rather say everything changed in my life. In January of 2020, I was exploring around this place called Connaught Place in Delhi. And while I was doing that, I came across a calf who didn't have a leg and I saw this person feeding that calf at that time. And I was just like taken aback because you never see amputated calves, right? A calf who does not have a leg. And I asked that person, you know, like, where is it that this calf has come from? What actually happened to this calf altogether? And he shared with me that a while ago, a car had actually run over his leg and he's actually a reject of a dairy farm that was nearby. And I was like, okay, why is it that, you know, the farmer actually left the calf on the road because the farmer is not supposed to leave the calf on the road, right? And then that person had no answer to that. And later on, just after that, I kind of got back home and tried to understand, you know, what was the connection between the dairy industry and the incident that I had actually come across. And I just uh, came across this video, dairies, uh, uh, dairies, a video around the, you know, cruelty of the dairy industry. Was it the to Dairy India is Scary? A, oh, sorry. Ha, it India. was Dairy is Scary. Yeah, it, it was Dairy is Scary. And um, that, that's the one I watched. And then I also watched Unholy Cattle of India. There were two videos I watched. I watched and um, I was just taken aback like to have come across such cruelty and such suffering that these animals actually went through in the dairy industry. I was a born vegetarian. So after having like seen this, I just just could not, right? Like, how could I not like, you know, be somebody who is not contributing to the suffering these animals are actually going through? So that's when I thought, you know what, I need to understand more about it. I read about veganism, what it was, the basic ethics around veganism. And I was like, OK, I need to go vegan. That's when I went vegan, like probably in a day. I just, it was just like a very random shift for me altogether. Wow. And uh, just after just after that, right, like I started, of course, advocating within my family. But a month or two later, I also like started making videos on animal rights on my own channel. 
uh, I don't like I st I wanted to do YouTube but I just felt like YouTube was like a lot of effort and I just didn't have the time to spare for that so I just started doing Instagram and you know like started making videos on Instagram started educating people on animal rights and veganism and have been in the vegan scene in India almost for now three years now so that's a little bit about my journey and how I started that's amazing you know what I love most about your Instagram page is that um your followers are you have quite active followers like everyone's very the because what i love is so you you make your content with uh, in hindi right some of it so you're kind of approaching yep. really yep. the whole india which some people you know english doesn't always come across um so the hindi like uh, everyone kind of basically understands so that's is what i love is that you're reaching these people and it's i think it's really amazing when you um said about the dairy i, th I thought it was so interesting because it's like we don't ever realize, right, um, what the dairy industry is actually like. And then we come across this like a calf and you're like, why is this the case? Like we never actually know that this happens. And then you only have, you only find out like after. It's like people really like kept in the dark <laughs> about it. And it's actually really crazy. Yep. Yeah. And especially in India, because what uh, you said, you grew up vegetarian. Yep, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So um what I find interesting as kind of an outsider to India is that like the cow is actually like there's a reason that um, uh, the vegetarians or the Hindu religion, right, views cows as holy. And um, definitely like, you know, there's always the Western perspective of India is that, you know, there's cows everywhere on the street and everyone will wait for the cow to pass. For, everyone will wait in traffic for the cow to pass, all that stuff. So then um, approaching like the dairy industry in India um could you share more about that like what's the difference uh is there a difference between the dairy industry in the western world and dairy industry in the indian society like um if there is a difference between them oh there absolutely is a huge huge uh, and a great deal of difference altogether between the western society and what happens in india center to the dairy industry altogether so just to give you a brief of india as a country i think india is a hindu majoritarian country and within the religion of hinduism what is basically said and in fact shared mostly is that cow is considered to be a holy animal as in people really worship cows people really consider cows as the mothers like at least from a religious point of view so that's the reason right like uh, that's the reason in india at the moment in 20 out of 28 states the slaughter of cows is banned but only cows not buffaloes all right so there's a huge distinction between buffaloes and cows that is actually looked at when we just talk about india as a country and uh, where it's not banned is like the northeastern states and the southern states altogether uh, the, the cow slaughter is legal so the major set of difference I would rather say is that in the Western world, everything is very factory farmed, right? Like it's very processed in the center that you have these cows who are like, uh, who are bred into existence. Then they're just like sent for slaughter once they're of no use at, at all, right? But in India, it's different in the context that there are different things that can happen with a cow once she, once she stops giving milk. Right, so the process till the time that she stops giving milk is kind of similar, right? The process generally is that, you know, the, the time that she actually hits puberty and is able to actually conceive is when a farmer will basically uh, insert a rod consisting this semen of a male into her vagina in order to impregnate her. And this is a process that's going to happen year on year on year on year until the time she's spent and she cannot give milk anymore. And every year when her babies are born, either be it a male or a female, right? If it's a male, males are generally just, you know, left on the roads or they're sent for slaughter in any of these states where the slaughter of these males is legal or they're sent for illegal slaughter altogether. These are the either three things or maybe they, they might be sent to a, uh, you know, a goshala or maybe a sanctuary or something along those lines. This is what something that generally happened with male calves. And in, in, in the US, right, like what would happen with the male calf is that they'll just be sent for slaughter and will be sent for wheel, right? That's just what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's not any good, right? Because again, if you like just look at the male calves on the road, they're just dying. And my incident, you know, centered on the male calf. That was also something that happened because of this only. So it's not any better at all because all of these babies, all of these individuals are suffering because of our own, our own greed. And what happens with the female cow, right? So a female cow, probably at the age of seven or eight, when she cannot give milk, is gonna go through the same process that the male calf went through. That is, she'll either be sent for slaughter in any of the states where the slaughter is legal, or she'll be, you know, like just left on the roads, 
or she'll be sent for illegal slaughter or she might be sent to an animal sanctuary. So these are the three, four things that might happen with these individuals altogether in, in India at the moment. Uh, it's, it's not as simple as what you have in the Western states because in the Western states, it's just like one process that's followed. It's quite complicated back in India because a lot of religion and a lot of, you know, uh, uh, people just like consider, you know, like associate a lot with the cow and a, a lot of people's feelings and emotions are centered around cows. So if you even like try to educate people who've been into the dairy business or if you try educating people who consider cows to be holy, they understand the suffering, but they would never, you know, be like, okay, you know, we can stop drinking milk because they're like, we just drink the milk from our mothers, right? And I mean, of course, we come up with different arguments and people don't have any answer to those arguments. So the next thing that I could ask somebody who says that is that if you say that you drink the milk from your mom, if your cow is a mother, would you treat your mother, own mother the way you treat the cow? And they'll always nice. be like, absolutely not. So that's their, you know, that's the contradiction and the uh, hypocrisy in a way that we a lot of times do come across. So that's a bit of a difference between, you know, what you'll find in India and in the Western countries altogether. That's really interesting to know. I think the most interesting part for me is that like a lot of people in India in India are naturally vegetarian, um, but they and they are vegetarian because they don't approve of slaughter of animals or eating animals. And then I feel like a lot of people that actually uh, that are vegetarian don't actually realize the slaughter and cruelty that goes into um, milk and eggs and stuff like this. I think especially also in India that they don't like if they like they view the cow like you said as a holy animal um, and they do take milk from them, but. It, I don't think they would be okay with sending the cloud for slaughter if they actually knew that this is what happens for them to have milk. You know what I mean? I feel like maybe there's a disconnect with what is actually happening um, and what um, what they think is happening with the cow. You know what I mean? They think it might be a more a very natural yeah. process. So a lot of them, right, like they just don't realize like what's happening all around, right? Like, so they say that, you know, we just like give them to somebody who will take care of the cow. We just like sell them to somebody who will take care of the calf. But they don't even realize that nobody is taking care of these babies, right? Like if there were so many animals to take care of, right? Then we just have cows running all around, even though we already have that. But despite of that, right? Like how many cows can you actually have in a country altogether? And all of this is just happening because of the fact that we are breeding them into existence for an unnecessary reason that does not need to exist at all, right? Yeah. So... Uh, like in a lot of interviews that I've taken from people centered around the dairy farms that I visited, different vigils I've done, different, you know, people I've spoken to over the last few years. Would you be able years. to share what? about the dairy farms? Yeah. Yep, so. I'll be able to. So uh, in any dairy farm that you visit back in India, right, what you'll see is that you'll come across 10 females and one male, right? And I always ask the farmers, right, where are the ten, nine other males? Because every time that a cow gives birth, there's a 50-50 possibility that it can be a male or it can be a female. So if these babies have been, you know, coming into existence for the last few years, where are the males? And they mostly just say that we gave them to somebody we knew or they are like back in our mm -hmm. village or like they have like other different reasons to give us, right? But they would de definitely never, con you know, in a confrontational way tell us that, you know what, all these babies are dead because they had to be sent for slaughter altogether, right? And see, the major different set of differences here is also between the cow and the buffalo. So what, is, what I've been spoke, speaking about as of now has been the cow. But if we just like look at the buffaloes, right? All the buffaloes in India are sent for slaughter. All the buffaloes. Like you are in Bombay, right? So when was the last time you came across a buffalo on the road, but not a cow? No. You always come across cows, right? Like whenever you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the roads. Yeah, for sure. So for sure, why, for sure. why, why is the, was that the reason? Why is that the reason? The only reason for that is that all the buffaloes are sent for slaughter. And in India, 55% of the population drinks milk from buffaloes. And 45% does from cows. So uh, what's happening all around here? Right? It's, these so are like it's, some yeah. really interesting things to look at. Yep. Right. It's kind of like because the cow is holy, they've basically replaced the cow with a buffalo for to and, and still have like have a dairy business. You know what I mean? Wow. That's 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 speciesism at its finest. <laughs> that's that's like speciesism as it at its finest, right? Like they'd be like, we'll drink, you know, like milk from desi cow, but we'll not drink milk from buffalo. Or we think that desi cows need to be, you know, considered uh, really precious, or they need to be considered like really holy. 
they're like and they don't even care about you know like mixed breed cows or you know like the cows that you might get in the US right they don't care about them at all all they care about is the desi cow actually they pretend That's to care about the desi cow they actually don't at the end of the day because they're again leading these babies to suffer yeah. in a way right so yeah 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 and like i hope that veganism is on the rise in india because it's such a vegetarian dominant um culture in the sense that um you can replace everything with vegan products like you can like i know indian food is cooked with ghee like butter but you can make that vegan uh like you can cook with the oil or vegan butter or like i know that there's very dairy heavy dishes but you can always like replace that so in that sense it will be actually easy in a, in a way for <laughs> in people in india to turn vegan because it's actually that you know vegetarian. absolutely i mean yeah yeah absolutely i mean i like hands down i can hands down say this that being a vegan in india is much easier than being a vegan in the us or being a vegan anywhere in the world because most of the food that you eat or can get in india is vegetarian and you just like for example you're using ghee right just to use oil you're using butter just use oil right it's so simple it's not that hard <laughs> so i'm not sure why is it that people don't get that yeah. right? like and the obsession with ghee and butter it's just like ridiculous at the end of the day if you're using yeah. you know cheese just use cashew cheese it's it's that easy but it's just that you know it's it's like people most of them are not educated and the ones who we try to educate are either receptive or they're not receptive the ones who are receptive are the ones who we actually take the conversations forward with because we believe in you know like effective activism and effective activism is that kind of activism where you spend time on people who are actually receptive i'm not going to spend even like more than 5 minutes on somebody who's who's going to be like okay you know what this is what i'm going to do i'm not going to change and okay goodbye I'm not going to yeah. be spending even 2 minutes on 2 more minutes on you because when i'm like going down for activism my objective is to get the most out of activism the activism i do and speak to as many people as i can and get people to not just go vegan and going forward also get active because i do believe that this is an issue center to it's it's a social justice issue right and in a social justice issue you need mobilization you need more and more people getting active for the animals so veganism is of course a non participation where you not participate in any exploitation of animals and that's the bare minimum but you also need to get active and you need to speak up and you know do anything and everything mm -hmm. to you know like fight for injustices all together yeah nice. so yeah definitely i feel like as being vegan you are setting the example of what it is that you stand for which is you know against animal exploitation and then definitely sharing being like a very proud vegan actually is good because then you can actually share you know what it is that you know um and you're right about yeah. the activism part it's it's hard to argue with people that um I just today watched a video and this was about an with an argument and the guy was also saying about that being gay or something is not correct so the guy so the uh, the vegan activist was like look I'm arguing with you and you don't even believe in gay rights so why am I even arguing with you about animal rights so in that sense you're right like you need to make sure that you are spending that education on someone who's actually open to it um and it is hard you Absolutely. know to you know um it's kind of deal with kind of walls sometimes um but definitely it's so important to be speaking up for the voiceless of course because yeah. as your your instagram username is animal activist ishan so i'm guessing that you're definitely like vegan for the animals one could say since you started even your vegan yeah. journey with the calves and um yeah. and how is that how has it been for you actually just talking about your vegan journey within your family and friends how has that been for you also like turning vegan um how was it actually you said you only turned vegan you took a, like a, it was kind of an overnight thing almost so yeah. how was how was that whole switch for you and and in with your family with your friends um yeah just a little bit about your personal vegan journey in that sense awesome so uh it was definitely a overnight switch for me but initially a few times definitely what happened is that i did create some animal products and very in the very beginning of that phase i probably you know like when i ordered something and i came across that there was this burger that had mayonnaise and i was like okay just forget it i'm i i can have it at the moment but going forward when i started actively advocating and was like and just became so passionate about it is when i just was like no what I, what i'm doing is wrong right like it just happened like three four times just after having gone vegan and i just stopped that as well so mm. i would rather say that i went vegan like uh in january in the jan in the january phase only when that happened but over time there could have been like some glitches of along course. the road that yeah. i could fix fix over time so 
that is the first thing that happened with me and uh, with my family and with my friends and itself my family has been receptive of me going vegan but my family has not been receptive of them them going vegan <laughs> so that's just the case that that has been initially when i started off they were like what are you even saying how can it live how can it live without milk i mean b- b- what the hell are you just telling us like this is just absolutely not possible that you can live without dairy and yogurt because i loved yogurt i used to eat yogurt with each and everything that i used to eat i used to eat yogurt with chinese noodles like that's how much i loved yogurt like i'm not kidding when i say that so considering considering the amount of yogurt i used to eat considering the amount of all dairy products i used to eat it was very difficult for anybody to fathom that i could have you know at least completely like gotten rid of everything at that time and i just was like no i have to do this and i needed to do this all together cool and uh th- like going forward i just like was like okay i wanted to get into the activism scene i got into the activism scene and along with that if i just like spoke about my friends in general my friends have been receptive of again me going vegan but not them going vegan i mean i to did try to you know actively try to speak to them about this but once you know that somebody is not willing to change i, I just don't like spending my time on those people altogether Smart. you can of course like keep passively doing activism where for example i come across a video i just share that video on my family group i come across something i just share that on my story that's a passive form of activism where somebody is seeing what you're doing and they might get impacted by that but you're not individually spending time on those individuals altogether anymore yeah yeah that's fair enough yeah that's what hello yeah so yeah overall it's been great like initially when i went to vegan i lost a lot of weight i lost like 10 kgs at that time really? which is like not healthy for me oh which is not healthy for me as well yeah did i you, did lose yeah. a lot of weight because i yeah sorry no, tell me more about that how come you lost you lost that weight was it were you not eating enough calories or was it really like you were just um not replacing it maybe I, I was like I had I had gotten into that you know raw vegan thing and they initially <laughs> were in this fruits vegetables so have you heard of this uh, movement called satvik movement in india no what is that okay you should check the you should check the page out so basically they are into holistic healing just by eating uh, foods that come directly from mother nature and they oh. just like talk about you know not eating anything that's processed so nice. they're like pretty big they have like over 4 million subscribers so uh, so the wow. person who's running the channel is my cousin and she's no and she's the one who I got inspired by into you know like the raw vegan thing all together so initially i was like into that phase of my life but later on i realized that i had lost so much muscle i had lost so much energy within me and um, i was also like not doing the you know like raw vegan thing also appropriately because within the raw vegan thing i was also doing intermittent fasting i was having only two meals so it was like you know what i'm just not eating properly so mm. that had happened but over time i tried to like gain weight and i did you know like i did like gain some weight in the i like, gained gain like again how much i'd rather say i gained 7 8 kgs back and that was important for me to do mm-hmm. and just mostly just like uh, hitting the gym you know doing weight training and most of it was muscle but that's that's how it has been since then yeah but what about if you uh, so me too with the yogurt thing by the way <laughs> i used to eat so much oh. yogurt <laughs> greek yogurt especially i was a greek big greek yogurt fan um but and and yogurt is yet to like really come by in india i'm very sad about that because in we do have really good soy yogurt and oat yogurt and different types of yogurts um but in india it's not yet available but i really really hope that soon it will be and i have a feeling that it will be they already had do have coconut yogurt though um but definitely i was very big on yogurt and dairy as well and i think when i went vegan i just noticed my health went so much better because i didn't know how bad dairy was for my body personally like i actually um I had a lot more energy turning be- when vegan than uh when not vegan because I remember when I was consuming a lot of dairy I was very tired like I was very it was very heavy for my body so quitting dairy for me was like a big uh deal for my health especially and that's also why I try in my activism personally I I try to do since um health is you know when it comes to people are selfish right so it's good if you can get them the health benefits of veganism so that they can see it's good for your health there's no cholesterol in prance you know like we can like start it like that yep. um we can yep. yeah so because there's definitely so many reasons to turn vegan and um but it's it's nice that you're wh- i like what you said about that you were like um you accidentally had some mayo on a burger etc etc but then once you're fully vegan it's kind of like you can't get yourself to do that anymore and i feel like what happens is you become 
you make the connection so strongly between what happens to the animals and the products that we eat that it's not like it's not like you you can't have it you just don't want to have it you know what i mean you just don't, don't want to have that because it's not i saw i saw something on pinterest where it was like um it's not vegan food it's if it's not called vegan food because if it's not vegan it's not food <laughs> and i love that yep. <laughs> because the sheet, like that's the vegan perspective you know you don't see that as food anymore so you don't want to ingest it into your body so it's kind of then you become really like fully vegan right that's that's easy to use as a you know like a mode of communication between people who are vegan <laughs> it's very difficult to use that you know between people who are not vegan because right. i mean you can do that you can definitely do that but a lot of people do get uh, like really taken aback and you know, like right. what, what are you actually telling you know us? yeah so, you're you're a couple you're a couple years into your activism i only just started and i'm trying to i'm, I'm understanding it now as well what you're seeing what you're saying with what kind of people you do spend your time on and and stuff like this um definitely I, i understand what you mean so it's it's like the right you want to have um the right type of activism because you're saying that saying this to someone who's not vegan wouldn't reach them you're saying they would get offended if I, <laughs> if you were to say that you know i think it has a lot to do with you know just like like if you just look at like look at like human resource managers right like in any organization right the biggest job of a human resource manager is to you know read people and understand what this person is like right like whether or not they'll be you know beneficial for the company or not or whether whether or not they'll be able to add value or not and also their ethics and their mor- you know the morality side of things as well i think being an activist is a lot like that you need to be able to read the person who you're trying to speak to and advocate to and just understand their level of interest by the way they speak by their body language and everything right and if they seem disinterested you ask them relevant questions but even after you know you have having asked them relevant questions they seem disinterested just somehow try to slide the conversation in a way wherein you're like all right it was great having a conversation with you has a leaflet probably you can reach out to reach us on this particular platform or something along those lines right nice yeah. that's just what you do in general so i think it's just like you know reading people understanding where people come from and yeah yeah and um it's it's that's great advice for for vegan activists all around but um do you think do you do you have positive feedback most of the time do you think or has there been a lot of people that are not receptive i think um i mean So I can like just put it in this way right like if there are like 20 people I speak to I don't I'm, I honestly don't get to speak to 20 people in a, at any outreaching event though probably I can speak I, at the very max would have spoken to 10 people at outreach Oh you've event done events like that random stretch I've conducted a lot of events <laughs> over the last 2 cool. 3 years conducting protests conducting outreaching conducting cubes like a lot of that stuff back in India nice. So when 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 we used to do the, do that right like if i like spoke to 10 people at a like just an outreaching event uh i'd i would get five people who could be receptive willing to learn five people who are not receptive unwilling to learn but i'll only spend like 20% of my time on the five people who are unwilling to learn so that's just the way i take take it ahead so that i know that most of the time that i am doing activism and i am trying to speak I am just trying to be more effective with my time and I'm also trying to be more you know uh, more welcoming in terms of the people who are more receptive altogether. Nice. And those give you some positive feedback then I think. <laughs> yeah, like so so many people have also told me I'm going to go vegan and they've also like just spoken to me like uh, back channeled me on my nice. Instagram and then just spoken and taken it ahead and yeah. a lot of people just go vegan right away as well. I had this girl who started crying in front of me at one of the events wherein she was like oh my god what just happens and they just like you know these are the people who actually understand and are able to relate with you know the suffering yeah. of animals all together that's amazing i feel like all humans have like we we don't want to cause animal cruelty we don't want to see animal suffering we don't want to be the cause of that but because there's such a disconnect and um and but obviously it requires an openness to see that to make that connection for sure that's true absolutely So you since you've been such a since you've been such a big part of the vegan community in India um do you think how how is that vegan community in India compared to maybe the west is it just starting now and do you see it on the rise what is your perspective on the vegan community in India being so actively part of it So probably I 
might not be the right person to answer that question but within my own experience i can because i just like have been a part of the vegan community for the last 3 years and i have definitely noticed a huge incremental increase in the turn number of vegans and the number of people who are getting getting active for the animal and the compassion that people hold but probably somebody who's you know been vegan for 7 8 9 years in india can actually give you the true perspective because some of my activist friends you know who went vegan in 2015 told me that there was nobody who was vegan they hardly had vegans altogether mm. and it's been at a rise at such an exponential level that it's just absolutely amazing to look at the number of people who are going vegan but again numbers in india is just like you know you don't know because again numbers whatever you number look at look at right it's just like a fraction of the entire yeah. population so that's another thing to look at but i think it is um so i stay in bandra in bombay and bandra has a lot of uh, vegan cafes so that's really cool where i come to a maybe not even a vegan cafe and i see something with vegan in the name or a vegan option available or something like this like they all have it on their menu now which is just uh really amazing to see that everyone's trying to actually incorporate it because they see that there is a demand for it so that's really positive um but i did i did speak about how you know the the yogurt they don't have that many great replacements so i'm hoping that that will happen over time um yep. yeah and um but i think what's cool about your followers is that i think that you obviously you have the india community following you and i feel like they ask you a lot of questions about um like the curious to know to be like i think i saw you you do like those q and a's right on your instagram and i saw someone asked like oh but if i don't drink cow's milk how do i get my calcium and like these are actually people that are actually genuinely curious <laughs> about like you know what can i do to get my calcium because they've been brought up to think oh i need milk for calcium and then we're telling them like no you don't so then they're like oh but how do i get my calcium then um so i think that's really cool that these that you know your 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 so like your followers are quite active and and curious they're very curious which i think is very positive sometimes it's like really overwhelming also because like like when you get back channeled with a lot of questions right like it's just so difficult to sometimes answer all all of them and a lot of them are like just so similar right like there are like three people asking me the same question and i have to repeat myself <laughs> over and over and over again it's just it just get really gets tiring as well sometimes but you just got to do what you are doing right yeah <laughs> the but the, the fact day. that they're following you it says a lot already that means that they're very you know interested in and in getting to know more and i i think um <laughs> Yeah, I think your video is also great about that they're mostly focused on animals more than anything. I mean, your username says it all, animal activist. So I think that's that's really cool that you um talk to me about you. You said maybe you wanted in the future to open like a sanctuary. Like you want to talk more yep. about that. Like what would be your your dream for the future? So, absolutely, absolutely. So my dream like you know like the dream life that I'd want to live is that probably you know once I have enough uh like once i've earned enough money i would rather say or i have like enough uh, financial stability going forward to be able to fund my own sanctuary start my own sanctuary and just like run it and keep running it with friends who are like activists like me or people who would be close to me at that time and just run that sanctuary somewhere back at home only and just rescue animals who probably you know like would have been killed or would have just been like discarded for example it's easier in india to rescue those animals who probably have some disability or some defect within the slaughter shops as well right so for example there's a hen who has a disability generally the farmers not the slaughter worker or in fact the butcher is not going to go about you know uh selling them mm. so you can just easily ask them you know whether or not you can have them as and just rescue them all together so wow. like just rescue these animals just be with them you know like spend a lot of time with them and just create content with them because i do believe that no matter how much we try to speak no matter how much we try to advocate for animal rights and you know be activist there is no better advocate for the animals better than themselves because when people spend time with animals they just realize that that they are individuals the way we are and right and yeah. uh it's so important that you just spend some time with the chicken with the pig mm. with the goat and you realize and come across their individuality and just realize the fact that they're not a goddamn burger right at the no. end of the day no but that's so, so sorry to interrupt you yeah but that's so interesting yeah, because um we have these ideas because of speciesism right we think that some animals are 
more stupid than other animals or, or something along those lines. And we actually view chicken, for example, we, we view them differently as maybe uh, some other animals. And we say, oh, chicken are very stupid. And they don't act, like they've, these people who say this have never spent time with a chicken to see how does a chicken actually show its intelligence because it is, you know, it's very, uh, all species have their own intelligence. And um, and I think, they, I think that's a disconnect. And we have, we're, we're, we're like fed lies, you know, we're fed um, ideas about things. I mean, for example, pigs, if you, uh, um, like people think pigs are dirty because they go in mud and everything, but they actually don't even have um, odor. They don't have... Um, an odor scent so they're actually really clean in that sense and but we've been told that they're dirty but is it actually true no like we've literally been fed lies um, or we've been told oh chicken are dumb or fished or don't have any intelligence either um and it's actually so crazy because if they do spend time yeah like if if people were to spend time with chickens they'd realize you know how smart these animals actually are and how fun and how they have their own personalities exactly exactly that what you said absolutely for sure absolutely I mean, it, it also like depends on the person, right? Like some of the people you come across are just like, I don't have any words to use. I mean, I, I, I just don't know. But some of the people are like just horrible people. And I can just be very honest with you on that, that they just don't care about animals. And we even when we like, you know, like a while ago, we kind of posted a video of having rescued a baby. And some people were like, how could you rescue those babies? I wanted to eat them or you know like there are such people Wh which, so, animal? which animal uh we we like some activists in bangalore had rescued mm. a chicken from a slaughter oh, shop chicken. and mm. uh some people like messaged me saying that you know what like it would have been better if you could just uh, just have like eaten them eaten this baby so <laughs> there are horrible people as well but you come across receptive people but as I, well in yeah. that regard but i do believe that most of the population like if you just make them spend time with animals they'll just realize and come across their their individuality and realize you know the disconnect that there is but i think when people say it's it's quite big words but like if they were to actually have to kill animals themselves like like maybe one percent would be able to do it you know actually cut that knife across like it's it's like people will say that but it's like put them to the test and you won't actually be able to do that but then of course it's about because they don't actually get the chance to do that right because it's uh, sold to us a supermarket it's kind of like getting them um to think about um is if if they're not doing it themselves is it still okay for someone else to do it on their behalf right that's what we have to get them thinking about Absolutely. um because Absolutely. if they say oh you should have we should have just eaten it then it's like oh would you be able to get this like cut off the head of this chicken like probably no so yep it's kind of it's but it is a lot of negativity for sure if someone says that to you it's, it's not nice for sure <laughs> absolutely yeah. so one one another difference i'd like to point out when you've raised this point is that in india a lot of the slaughter shops are pretty open right? really like, it's not oh, like in the u.s because no, yeah yeah because for example if i if i'm in if i'm in the rickshaw i i um drive past these like the chickens that they put in like a cage and then they yep. just sell Cages. it like a live chicken like that Yep. Yeah. So they're, they're not like what you have in the US, right? Like everything is behind a wall and everything right. is, you know, happening behind a closed door. So a lot of people, you know, in the US, I would rather say would be like, okay, you know, we just can't see this. And we've never even seen the suffering of animals right. in front of our own eyes. Right. But I know people, I know people who actually go to these shops, they decide a chicken. Okay, cut me, cut me this, cut me, cut this chicken for me and I'll take it home. So that's how it actually works in India. So the conditioning okay. in itself for a lot of people is such that they're used to that. And if oh. you get used to that set of conditioning, it becomes yeah. very difficult to reverse that set of conditioning, right? right. I mean, it's, it's more along the lines, you know, you as a human can be conditioned to do any possible thing. And I'm, I'm very sure of that, you know, it can be mm. conditioned to do anything. And it's just about how you think. So yep. f for for example, you've been doing something for a long time, you just consider it to be normal and you just don't want to go back or take a step back and think about what you're doing as a person. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's actually crazy. Is it, do they, um, when they choose the chicken, because I don't actually, I didn't know that how this, I don't know how this happens. Do, when they choose the chicken, do they see the slaughter of the chicken or the guy goes, slaughters them and brings it back? Like, how does that? I think, no, 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 no. Uh, the guy goes, slaughters them and brings them back. That's how it happens. So they do but see him alive them, and dead, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think that they'll have a problem with seeing it as well. Like a lot of them would be okay with it as well because they're used to that, right? Like it's just yeah. like a, they consider them as commodities. That's the main yeah. problem altogether. Yeah. They're not yeah. individuals yeah, yeah. for them. That's the crazy part, you know. When I see sometimes um, factory farms footage and stuff, and you see these workers handle these animals literally like commodities, like as if they're not living sentient beings, and that's the craziest part for me to see that stuff. Like seeing them as objects when you know that, you know, they have their own personality, they have their own feelings, they feel pain and all that stuff. That's the hardest part, yeah, for sure. It's, it's just it's just horrible. It's like, but I we hope for a better world. I mean, let's yeah. see how it goes, right, going <laughs> forward. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it's all a mindset. It's about what we've been conditioned to believe. And I think that's why um, no one is actually kind of born vegan because it's... Um, we're born with a certain set of standards and in that standard right now in society it's the standard to be not vegan or actually um i'm reading a book by dr Me melanie joy which is about carnism which is the invisible belief system that we have where it's okay to eat certain animals uh it's not okay to eat others and it's kind of saying saying that it is like veganism is a belief to not use animals for exploitation carnism is also a belief um that we can use these animals for exploitation uh, for exploitation and it's kind of like getting them to see that what they believe is not the standard, what they believe is a certain belief, you know what I mean? And getting them to realize that beliefs can change, but obviously it's hard, but yeah, like you said, hopefully we got there. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's hard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, kind of uh, final things about, I want to really bring focus to your Instagram and like what it is that you do with your activism. How often do you do it? How often do you plan to do like an interview or to make something like this, right? What we're doing right now. How busy is it in your schedule? Because I know you're also studying. So like how um, often do you post and, and what's your always your goal when posting? Like, uh, yeah, just about a little bit about your Instagram. So so I, I, I like prior to having moved into the US, I was like pretty active in the scene, like almost uploading a video every day. Like uh, in terms of the events, we used to do once or twice a week. That's how we used to go about it. Like the major and the big events, like the Animal Rights March, it happens one eight, once in a year. Or we have local marches that can happen like two or three times in a year. Like there's a city center march as well. And you can have a march in Delhi. You can have a march center to only Jaipur or something along those lines. So different events that keep on happening. So in general, for the offline events, you used to spend like one or two like it used to generally be one or two days in a week in terms of activism in back in india I used to post videos almost every single day is what nice. i used to try to do nice. and now that i'm here in the u.s like initially when i shifted of course i had time for nothing because of the settling in because of other things i had to do like everything right like course, because in yeah. the u.s i'm sure you'd be aware of that you get places and furnace you have to furnish your entire place <laughs> like just get started from the scratch right so after having done all of that, I would rather say for the time being, like school keeps me like really, really, really busy through the week. Exactly, through the yeah. weekend, I'm able to like probably, con you know, like make a video or two and just post that or just use like the previous content, content I made. Cool. Like just change it a little bit and, you know, like uh, post what makes sense or just like... Um, you know, a boost a video of mine or a con set cool. of content that I believe would be able to reach the right audiences so that I get like responses centered around where people are like pretty, you know, uh, curious yeah. about the entire scene altogether. Yeah. And most of your content centers around trying to get that uh, mindset of animals are not commodities. Like it's mostly centered around animals, you think? Your, with your, it, it's, your... it is just about animals it is just cool. about animals sometimes i do speak about health because so i am passionate about three things right animal rights food and health like yes. health also i am but yeah but recently like because of my injury i've not been able to like be that active in the mm. like the uh, working, working out. out scene yeah but like previously i used to like love working out eating good <laughs> food and just like spending time with animals so, nice yeah. i love that do you hope to have, um, do you have any, have you had pets or like animals in your life before? I rescued a baby who was two, two months old when she was like little and she's not my pet. I'd say that she's a companion animal because I personally also believe that the word, the pet that we use is also species in a way because right? pet like kind owning of, versus having, yeah, the owning aspect it, of it. Yeah. It basically right. says that we have ownership over somebody else. Like people say that, you know, I have a pet, I bought a pet or, you know, I yep. rescued a pet. But you just like claiming ownership over somebody who, of yeah, course, is yeah, not yeah. an own, like you don't own someone, right? That's so what, yeah. I'd say that she's my, com she's my companion animal and I kind of 
saw her grow and at the moment she doesn't live at my place she lives outside on the street and that's pretty great because she has her other companion buddies to hang out with chill with and i mean if we wanted to like like have her at home we could have but we also think that if they're living a good life where they are there's no need to rescue them because they're living a yeah. good life yeah. already nice yeah. i like this part about um that's why um so one of my favorite vegan activists is earthling ed if you're familiar with his work so he i listened to his podcast about pets and um he said about that if um you when you buy like when you buy a, a specific breed and stuff you're literally like as it's like a commodity like you are um saying I, i own you now and like i bought you so i own you so that's why um what he suggests is really like rescuing like animals for sure like um fo- like adopting animals versus um buying them like he was definitely talking about that difference for sure because he's also saying like you don't say you you own a child like you have a child you don't own a child like <laughs> that part. absolutely 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 you just like i would treat an animal the way you treat a human baby and the minute you start doing that you will realize nice i, I mean and they are babies they are yeah, babies right i know and about earthling at you know earthling at is in my city at the moment in boston are you serious is he doing any i'm uh, serious oh my he's days. in harvard right now and harvard is like five miles away from where i live and maybe oh i might God. get to meet him like are you gonna week. are you gonna reach out to him to, or, or is he gonna does he have so, an event or he he's might like i'm just fingers crossed like we have an event on wednesday with hurtling at at our school so fingers crossed for that i hope that goes well so i hope he shows jealous. up he'll I'm be having so a debate well. table so are you serious yo that yeah. is so cool that's, that's I, the plan that yeah. is so cool i i hope you get to be in one of the videos i mean he won't be debating you because you're <laughs> obviously already you know <laughs> he doesn't need to convince you but i think that's so cool and i'm really jealous i think uh he's one of my inspirations for sure the way he approaches um vegan activism is just so beautiful because he never attacks someone in his debate he's always just asking the other questions to get them thinking about why it is that they think the way they do but he never you know will tell them like oh you need to stop eating meat or something like this you know <laughs> it's very like yep. very peaceful and very an inspiration for me do you have any other um vegan activists online or that you would um recommend people to follow or that are your inspiration or so uh, some of the activists i love in the community are voice of vegans you can check their page out there's this guy there's this friend of mine karan ps rathore he creates good content uh he tries to be active but his content is like really good quality content amazing and then you have then you have a uh, activist known as vegan rover you can check her content out it's like really inspiring the number of people she's inspiring and then you have uh, somebody called arvind animal activist who i shared who's who's activist who's page i already spoke about a while ago these are the indian activists and of course the Amazing. activists globally are like joey cap strong then you have earthling ed you have other so activists all together yeah before like we like spoke speak about the activists i also wanted to speak about his method method of activism right like you're talking about asking Earth questions yeah so so this is like what we call as a socratic method okay so the socratic method is so effective because you don't come up with a claim you know you don't come up with your own conclusions wherein you try to say okay you know this is what it is and this is how it is you just ask people questions and when you ask people questions you you know like t- take your questions in a way that you know people derive to their own contradiction themselves and they realize how they are you know contradictory in nature and how they need to go about changing altogether it's just making them things realize themselves rather than you coming up with you know okay you know go vegan like you can definitely tell people go vegan but you need to know when to say that is what i would rather say nice i love it yeah it's definitely uh, i'm learning as well a lot about in my own activism on how best to do that um people still do feel very attacked from the start i feel because of that cognitive dissonance right where it's like they know kind of it's wrong but it's it's okay in society so i can do it too you know stuff like this um but it's so that's definitely like it's it, it's hard in the activism thing but i definitely that's the most peaceful method i totally agree to like you know get them to realize their own mind like what it is that they believe yeah for sure absolutely um do you have any final things that you wanted to share on today's podcast on like advice to aspiring vegans or advice for people in india on like vegan substitutes that you know of or your favorite store or anything actually that you feel like sharing for today's podcast 
So for the people who are back in India, I'd just like to give everybody just one suggestion, spend time with animals, visit sanctuaries, go there, you know, understand the individuality of people, understand the individuality of these non-human people altogether, and just realize, you know, the place that they come from and realize that they don't want to be exploited and they don't want to suffer. Are there and about any, the restaurants, they're um, like... Yeah, sorry, sorry inter- just on that point. Are there any um, like farm animal sanctuaries that you've visited or that you know of in India? So there are some like back in India, there's this place called Barnyard, which is like a Ooh, animal sanctuary. Okay. Yeah, Barnyard, Barnyard uh, sanctuary. Then we have like some other sanctuaries as well. There's Friendly Coast, there's Barnyard, there are like a few there back in India. Is it's that like um, in Delhi farm is what animals? I know about. Is that farm animals? They're, or? They're, they're, they're all farm animals. They're farm animals who were exploited and they basically wow. um, were rescued by these sanctuaries altogether. Amazing. So basically, they, 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 you can basically go there and basically take a tour. You basically donate. Basically, they ask like some amount for a visiting amount for you to be able to like go around, which is like a donation for them for their sanctuary. So that's how it goes. Very cool. And yeah, I interrupted you when you said about maybe some restaurants or, or grocery supermarkets or like recommendations for people in India to make help make that switch. If you know any brands that like have good, good vegan products. So there are using. quite a lot. There are quite a lot of them actually. So uh, in terms of the brands, uh, people should like, like, like I'd suggest uh, soy milk in India, which is like cheaper than any other plant milk, which in general would cost you somewhere between 100 to 130 rupees for mm-hmm. a liter yeah. and uh, generally go for SoFit or so good are the two brands you can check out otherwise in terms of vegan butter there's this brand called white cup which has the best vegan butter ever like you can't figure out the difference <laughs> then uh, in terms of the cheeses you have soft spot vegan cheese which is pretty good check that out um Yogurt, in terms of yogurt, you have Epigami or vegan yogurt, which is great, but it's a little bit expensive. In terms of the yogurt, you can make your own yogurt at home. That's also great. Otherwise, you can also check out White Cubs vegan yogurt. The strawberry, like the strawberry flavor of the that yogurt is just amazing. It just, <laughs> it just is mind-blowing altogether. So there are like different brands that people can definitely check out, yeah, right? Awesome. Like they, they just, yeah. Awesome. Have you made your own vegan yogurt? I tried once and it was so horrible that I didn't try again. <laughs> I tried so I once like, too. No, I'm not gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna go ahead with that again. I I bought so in India there's also Urban Platter which I order from which has a lot of vegan uh, products. Mm. And Urban Platter had this yogurt capsule where you, it's like basically the how like those bacteria to create yogurts and so you had to put that with milk and then in the fridge and but it didn't happen for me. I, I tried it once, but I should probably try it again. But <laughs> because yeah, I like you, I'm a big yogurt addict as well. Um, but that's why I hope so in Europe we have Alpro and Alpro has soy yogurt, which is really, really good. Um, and I've, I it? bought it. Is yeah, Alpro. So that's why I hope Alpro will like come worldwide. Um, they're in Dubai as well. So in the UAE already. So as long as they just keep making their way more to Asia, that would be great. Um, yeah, and the yogurt and they must good. be in the US also. They must be yeah, in the US also. I'm I've not sure. tried them I'm out. Sure. Oh, yeah, you're in the I'm US. Pro, okay. You should try Alpro. Yeah. Yeah. Because they okay. have a, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um yeah All because right. their yogurt is good so definitely try that awesome. and yeah with that are we rounding up the podcast on the final advice for people in india um yeah and for anyone else watching who's like a vegan or wants to help spread the vegan message i think this podcast has helped a lot with saying about the like the right type of activism to do um so i think that's really good thank you so much for sharing all that you know awesome awesome yeah. thank you so much for having me over i love this Welcome. Hopefully, maybe you can. Do, maybe we can do more. Have like maybe we can ask people questions on what they want to find out, and then we'll do another one <laughs> where we answer those questions. Awesome. Awesome. All Look right. forward to it. Amazing. Yeah, thank you right. so much, Ishan, and thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank see you. you guys. Bye. Bye.